The Bible gives us a story of a man that tried to help God. Till today we are suffering. The Bible says Abraham went down to Egypt. Have you noticed in scripture that every time the Bible is talking about a sojourn by the Jews, by his chosen people, Israelites, to Egypt, he always says down. You don't go up to Egypt. Because Egypt is going backwards. Egypt is the place of slavery you were delivered from. You shouldn't be going back to Egypt. Your focus should be your journey to Canaan. To the city of God. To the place of your deliverance. To the place of your destiny. He says Abraham went down to Egypt. It's when he was leaving Egypt that the Pharaoh gave him Hagar. He, he, exactly, Souvenir. So, as he was leaving, they wrote on it, on the souvenir, Abraham came to Egypt. Anything you take from Egypt will grow in your house. It grew. Became attractive. It was that same thing that Sarah said, see you, enter inside. And from Egypt, came a child, and God says, since you want to help me, I will bless him. He too will become mighty. See, today, we are still fighting those battles. Because a man wanted to help God. These people will arrive in a foreign country. They will now be calling you in Nigeria that has a prayer life. They say, help. I don't know why as I entered, everywhere became dark. You were blind since you didn't know. Then you decided to help God. And Satan will be waiting for you. That's what he does with blind people. He'll be waiting for you to try to help God. And the reason you'll be forced to help him on your pilgrimage is because you are uncertain. You don't know how to turn. You don't know where to go. You don't know how to approach life. Ah! Next week I hope to show you how to synchronize with heaven on your pilgrimage. That's what I hope to teach next week, if Jesus allows me. How to find synchrony and reading with your maker. This pilgrimage is supposed to be sacred and it's supposed to be setting. You need to know at every point in your life, this is where I'm going. This is what God is doing. This is what God has commanded. These are the instructions I have been given to obey in this season of my life. If you are uncertain, you will be afflicted with fear. And the reason you will be uncertain is because you are blind. The other thing that brings fear is unrealistic expectations unrealistic expectations. And the reason you will have unrealistic expectations is because you are blind. If your eyes are open to see what it is that God is doing with your life, you will know eh, that it is not that God cannot give it to you, but God does not think it is necessary for you now. Have you thought about it? Wait, listen, listen. I want you to think about it carefully. David returns from battle. Hmm? A skilled warrior called David, he returns from battle. Skilled warrior. Saul has killed his thousands. David has killed his tens of thousands. A skilled warrior. Men that came to him, he raised them to be mighty men. He was a skilled warrior. Then he comes back and hears that his family has been taken. Braubiora. He doesn't climb his horse and start charging to battle. He first goes to a corner and cries like a mortar. His men are weeping. David himself too is weeping. His humanity comes to the fore. That even strong men bleed too. He wept. 
The Bible says the men began to speak of stoning him. And then when his tears had dried, the Bible says what? He encouraged himself. Oh my God. It's not motivational speaking. He encouraged himself how? In the Lord. There's something he had with God. You see, listen brethren, if you, are blind, if you don't have something that God has shown, spoken, when push comes to shove, eh, you will not have an anchor to turn to. You think he just got up and said, bring the Urim and to He first of all did what? Encouraged himself in the Lord. He said, I have something with God. Let me inquire. He said, I cried unto the Lord with a loud voice. David knew that if he goes to God, God will speak to him. Oh God, Psalm 3, one of my favorite Psalms. How greatly increased that day that troubled me. If you know what, how that Psalm helped me in my difficult years. Psalm 3. How greatly increased a day that troubled me. Many there be who say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O oh God, I shield for me the glory and the lifter. I cried unto the Lord with a loud voice and he heard me from his holy heel. That's Psalm. Hmm. In the days of my greatest pain, that was the Psalm I used to turn to. Because that Psalm was the story of my life at one point. Many were saying, you will die in non-entity. God can't help you. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Then he came out. He said, where is that battle the priest? Come. Give me the Urim and the Turim. Normally, the priest is supposed to be the one to interpret. But David said, bring it to me. That's why I don't have the time to do that tonight, but I can show you through scriptures that David was king, priest, and prophet. And he threw it. And the Urim and Turim came up. And he said, what said the Lord? And he said, pursue. For you shall overtake and recover all. Wait first. Think about it. A man's wife, his children, were captured. And he waited for God to speak first. The implication is, what if God had said, No. It means David was prepared. That's what men that have sight in the spirit, that's how they live on the earth. That if it is no, eh, I will clean my eye and I will stand tall. And if they say, why did you not go and bring your wife and children back? The Lord said so. That even though it looks like captivity is the best option for me now, the Lord says so. Many times, the reason you are under pressure, your expectations are unrealistic. How do people have unrealistic expectations? Expectations that don't line with scriptures, don't line with the will of God, don't line with what it is that God has in mind to do for you in a season. So you are hoping for something that God has not yet given. If God has given it, then you can hope for it. And then you can with patience wait for it. David was going to leave his wife. I imagine how that scenario would have turned out. What was he going to tell the men? They were already preparing to stone him he would have come and said, well, uh, God said we should leave your wives to be raped. By because, say you know that's what they would have done to the women. That God said we should leave them. Leave your children as captives. They are going to be laboring in the fields as slaves. Hmm. It takes a man to, that knows God 
to trust him absolutely. What have you seen? You see, the way I live, hmm? I live like this because of the things I have seen. That's why people who come on social media and they are attacking me. Eh? One was trying to attack one message I preached in Kano. I didn't bother to respond. The reason I do as if I'm not seeing them, I'm going to stand before the one who sent me to repair the waste cities. And when I stand before him, I don't want to stand like Saul. When Samuel entered into the palace, he said, what is this bleating of the sheep that I hear? Did the Lord not tell you to kill all the Amalekites? What is this? So I said, uh, is the people. Oh, the people. Were the people there when the Lord anointed you as king? The people. He said, because you have disobeyed the Lord, the Lord has already also rejected you. Why will you leave the matter of your sacred destiny and pilgrimage to the hands of public opinion? When the Bible is clear that every man, singular, will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. To receive a reward for the things done in the body, whether good or bad. Every man. Paul, Saul, sorry, King Saul, shifted the responsibility of his destiny to the people. He said, we left the, the choicest, thinking that he can impress God by disobedience. Your unrighteousness and disobedience never impresses God, regardless of your good intentions for doing it. God is not impressed by good intentions, if those good intentions lead you to disobedience and unrighteousness. The thing that impresses God is always absolute obedience. Absolute loyalty. Even if it means that it is going to hurt you. Personally. We all are going to stand and give account. Go back to Hebrews chapter 11. We are still in verse 13. But having seen them afar off, where what? Assured of them, number one, when your sight is clear in the spirit and you understand the expectations and the burdens of the Lord for your life, it brings what? Assurance. Once that assurance comes, what the Lord expects you to do is to embrace it. You embrace it. Oh, you've heard the Lord show you in dreams and in visions that you are called to be a missionary. But you keep running away. You are dodging it. Many times, the resources and the anointing and the graces and the giftings associated with your prophetic pilgrimage or your prophetic destiny in pilgrimage will only begin to flow in your direction when you embrace your calling. If you don't embrace the calling, your refusal to embrace what it is that God has shown you is a sign that you do not trust him enough with your pilgrimage. You do not realize that your pilgrimage is what? Sacred. That means we are not just living here hopelessly. I hope I can get there. We are not just running around here aimlessly. God, like a master artist, Every stroke of the brush is intentional. So your life is intentional. Your being in worry now is intentional. Who you are going to marry, God is intentional about it. Where you are going to school, he is intentional. I will show you in scriptures just now. He's intentional. Where you live, when you will leave where you are living now and go to another location, he is intentional. But many people do not enter into this joyful pilgrimage because they refuse to embrace.
Iblis. They are coming. And they confess that they were what? Strangers and what? Pilgrims on the earth. Once you embrace your calling, the next thing you realize is that God has called you to separation. Even though we are all mortals and we are all humans on the face of the earth, I'm a stranger here. And apart from being a stranger, I'm on a journey in this life. My final destination is not this world. My final destination is eternity in the new Jerusalem with Jesus. So I'm a pilgrim. 